Welcome to this week's episode of Cables, Coffee, and Curveballs with your hosts, the Bald AV Guys. Hey, 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 listeners. Welcome back to Cables, Coffee, and Curveballs. Happy New Year. That's right. We are in the first episode of 2024. And I'm here with my main man, Rich Miller, and Gopesh on the other side of the glass. Go ahead. Do you, fellas? Yes, indeed. Happy 2024, everybody. I uh, just wanted to shout out Gopesh on the other side of the glass, also with the cable snaking through the door. Uh, I'm sure we'll get to that <laughs> at some point, but uh, happy to be here in 2024. We're ready to rock and roll. I can't wait to see Rich trip over a cable at some <laughs> yes, point during I'm this podcast. I'm definitely going to fall. Um, uh, be, you know, before we introduce our guest, Rich, uh, a couple of housekeeping items. Do you want to do you want to talk about the very special uh, release coming up next week? Yes. So we have a really awesome and first of its kind AV game show. Greatest uh, AV greatest game show. Greatest and only of all time. <laughs> and uh, the first two episodes are dropping next week. So when this is actually out there probably this week and um you will see who has bragging rights for infocom we're gonna have a couple more rounds left get to the march madness brackets and yep. uh, whoever wins it all is gonna have uh probably get a bald av guy sticker at uh, infocom yeah well, quick maybe we'll note, come up with something better than that but quick note to the contestants we'll be reaching out soon for some dates to start recording that episode yes uh but but rich without further ado let's well, let's let our guests yeah. introduce yeah. themselves. This is, I'm really excited about this episode and a great way to kick off this this year. So go ahead, uh, Jeremy and Jeff, uh, go ahead, introduce yourselves to us, to our listeners. Um, I'm Jeff Andyhoff and uh, my partner here, Jeremy, um, and uh, I started in the audio video business uh, almost 40 years ago. This makes me the old guy in the bunch, I guess. Um, you know, I started uh, with, the, with the church doing typical, you know, doing the, the church sound system thing. and um, that actually, you know, developed into a whole career for me. Um, so I've done everything from uh, rental staging to um, installation um, to owning, um, you know, companies. And um, the last eight years now, I'm owner of a company, uh, another company called Savvy. And um, more recently now, um, uh, you know, Jeremy actually should insert here that Jeremy and I go back uh, almost 30 years. Uh, that we've known each other. We used to wrench on cars together, work together. Um, we kind of went our separate ways career-wise. He went into um, to be a customer of mine for a lot of years. And um, so more recently now, we've uh, you know stumbled into um, what we're doing uh, together uh, for the last couple of years here. So Yeah, so um, I'm Jeremy Meyer. Like Jeff said, um, we met about 30 years ago um, in the AD world. Um, doing production work and things like that. He went his way with some other companies and and I went into the education world. So um, became a AV systems manager at a, at a small liberal arts college here in town. And um, like Jeff said, I've, I've been a customer of his several times through some of our arenas and some of our, um, our bigger venue spaces. Um, he's helped uh, you know, arrange and get, get systems in places like that I, I generally take care of all of all of the spaces on our campus here um and so yeah you know that's been you know 20 28 years in that now probably and um in the last year we've you know ventured into this i uh, stumbled across this and um you know came up with a solution for something at the college and and you know, and, and thoughts of trying to turn this into something, you know, reached out to Jeff as he's had done, you know, had, had um, you know, started some companies on his own. And, and so he's, he's worked as we've helped bring this along, bring it to market now. Great. Yeah. The one thing I think uh, we have something in common here, uh, the four of us, is that you guys met in the AV world for 30 years. Rich and I also met in the AV world not for 30 years, but uh, north of 20. Um, and, you know, uh, you guys started this company that we're going to talk about. And Rich and I started this podcast <laughs> that we are talking on. So full circle. I mean, this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, coincidence, right? Um, but tell us about this amazing, amazing logo. No, I'm kidding. This amazing <laughs> <laughs> product that you guys have. Rich and I played around with it a little bit. Um, we have a lot of wonderful opinions, but why don't you tell us a little bit how it came about? Um, you know, what, what got, what got you thinking about a product like this? Well, for, um, Jer Jeremy, uh, solved a problem that he was having on the, at the school. 
um, with uh, cables wandering off, um, you know, continually walking around, you know, small liberal arts college, obviously, but you're still walking around campus, uh, spending a lot of energy. And also, you know, you've got a drawer full of cables you've got to keep handy. So that, uh, when the teachers and professors, uh, you know, uh, and the students run off of these cables or they get damaged or whatever. Um, so that was kind of a continual part of his job. And just like, uh, you know, every, every good invention is, you know, comes out of, you know, necessity, you know, frustration. So Jeremy invented this cool little thing. Um, he had it, uh, put it in a few different places in campus and, and uh, people caught on to the idea that it was pretty cool. And they kept telling him, like, you got you to gotta do something with this. You got to make it into a business. So that's when he, you know, called me up. He said, I got this this device thing I made and, you know, I have people tell me I need to do something with it. So we sat down and had lunch and he showed me what he had, um, which uh, didn't take me very long, all of about a nanosecond to go, wow, this is really pretty cool. Um, definitely we need to do something with this. The, the first thing we did was took it from, you know, a, a product that he was, you know, literally using a router in his garage to build. Um, so I said, okay, well, first thing we need to do is make it into a real product, you know, something, you know, uh, that we can build and it's going to look, you know, look good. Um, so we uh, put a little time and effort into that. Um, the next thing I said, well, you know, not that it makes a big difference, but we should probably, you know, talk to a patent attorney, maybe see once if there's anything here with that. Um, that came to fruition. So we do a, a patent on this product. Um, and uh, then we just, as we, you know, going along here, so, okay, let's, let's we, we need to make this into a business. Um, I already had a business, but we kind of talked back and forth. This is something that, uh, um, it, although it complements my existing business, um, we think it's going to be, you know, big enough to be definitely be on its own and be its own thing. So we've ventured into this together. Um, we've named it Cable EZ, and um, that's that's where we're at today. We've got, uh, you know, a couple of variations that on, you know, that we've from our original product. We've got a couple, you know, variations and um, things, you know, cool things we can do with this. Um, so from there, I'll turn it over to Jeremy because uh, he, like I said, he's the guy that had the um, impetus, the idea, and uh, you know, I'll let you let Jeremy take it from here. Yeah. So um, you know, as you're looking at, you know, I, you know, we've got the 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 device here. You're, you've got um, you know, a sample of of our our latest version of the the no drill mount version, where it's just literally the, the device sticks onto the television, but um, like Jeff said, you know, this has been a, um, an ongoing thing for me in, in, the, in, in the college where, where I'm at is, you know, creating spaces, huddle spaces, conference rooms, meeting rooms where, you know, and our classrooms where they're, you know, one of our, our mottos in my own office is convenient, reliable, useful, and making things so that it works and works all the time. And, and one of the constant frustrations we've been dealing with in, in our student space where we've got 24 rooms available 24 seven for um, student collaboration, huddle spaces and stuff was was maintaining an HDMI and a USB connection for the webcam that now that we're into, everyone's got to have virtual connection to something else. And um, those HDMI cables were always, they were either getting broken off they were disappearing. Somebody would need one for their Xbox. Who knows what? You know, I think a lot of people are accidentally walking off of them when they're when they're shoving all their cables in into their bag at the end of a meeting. But um, this really came about as um, as as an answer to that. Um, you know, we've kind of coined the term "captive cable mount" here um, because the device literally locks the cable into the bracket, um, unlike ruggedized connectors and, and things like that, that just strengthen the connection point to the wall. This really truly makes it um, impossible without somebody disconnecting the cable um, from or disassembling the box to remove that cable. Um, the cable started off as, um, you know, the, the initial version of this was just a box mounted to the wall. Um, I don't know if we're going to show. I can. I've got a version of it here, um, but it was um, just a matter of. of um, to be a little all over the place here, but um, the the box.
this is where I'm, I'm less than polished, so you can do a little close work here, hopefully. Um, I mean, we'll be we'll be adding the unboxing video along with this okay. um, as well. So yeah, so so the bracket itself, as as you can see, um, it just the connector the where the the connection the the initial single gang version was designed in a way that an HDMI cable would come off the television or the USB cable from the from the webcam would go from the device to through the wall route through the wall into this box and then a connection would happen either via a barrel or just the, the male female connection um, on the USB would happen inside the box and the cable passageway on the way out of the box is too small to allow the connector to go through so it actually allows the part of the cable which is the strain relief to actually do its job so where normally the connector an hdmi connector on, on something like this the hdmi connector gets broken off you know on the end because of, of how it gets stressed and tripped on in a room this makes it so it, it can't pull out and the strain relief ends up taking the stress um so it it evolved a little bit, you know, we, we it started with the single gang version when we started meeting with with um, contractors and integrators around. They're like, that's great, but we have um, DTP transmitters or we have fixed transmitters in the wall, so we need some way to connect to that and, and gain the same functionality. Um, that's where our two gang version came into play with the pins that you can see if you if, when you open the box, there's there's some pins that force the cable to route. Um, through through a couple of 90 degree um, inside the box here. The cable comes in through the back of the box and out the front of the box. And just those two 90 degree connectors, no matter how hard you can see, how hard I can pull onto this, this, the cable up top here stays loose. So um, just the matter of routing that cable through a couple of, uh, of bends creates a, a strain relief there that makes it again so that that cable can't be pulled, can't stress the back of the television. Um, and then when the whole part's assembled, um, you get that kind of. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I jump in here? Can I jump in here real yeah, quick for a, for a quick second, Rich? Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. Yeah. This took me back in time, um, you know, when we were much younger. Well, I was head full of hair. I don't know about you. Um, for all our listeners, I've never known Rich with hair. So, Fair. Um, Fair point. However, 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 um, you know, Jeremy, everything you said, uh, and I'm sure Rich took you back to a time as well when mm -hmm. we were young and running through the hallways of Miller Hall because uh, <laughs> somebody called and said, hey, you know, my computer's not working or whatever it is, and you go in and you find out that somebody took... Uh, a brand new HDMI cable because you know back then HDMI cables were yeah. uh, far more expensive right. than they are today. Mm -hmm. Or even uh, even you know where it's just like oh yeah you know it's not working. You go in there and you find out that they tripped on the wire or something along those lines and something very simple mm -hmm. that did not have to interrupt my lunch <laughs> or uh, you know um, whatever it is that I might have been doing. Um, you know, I looked at this product as a uh, ground groundbreaking or just really just brilliant product in in today's uh, AV world uh, in the sense that you know when we're designing these uh, meeting rooms and conference rooms we're not it, it's silly to put in it's silly to put in a computer in every single classroom you know what I mean it's 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 a BYOD model it should be a BYOD model and then you run into the issue of, oh, well, you know, now I got to core the floor or I got to chop through the floor and I got to run cable through the tables. To me, the first thing that came to my mind is I put a TV on a wall. I stick this bad boy right behind that TV, mm. you know, boom, bring your laptop, do your Zoom calls. You know, is um, that's that's the first thing that came to my mind, Rich. I don't know about you. Yeah, I think the, the actually the first thing I thought of was actually it's funny because it's a recent story. A couple of weeks ago, we we were, went to go into a room on campus uh, not a room that we have anything to do with, but uh, thank we, you for clarifying we, that. <laughs> we walked into the room, and it had its you know HDMI um, uh, inputs or outputs for you to plug a cable in, and you there was supposed to be a cable there on the mm -hmm. table, and we were supposed to be able to just plug and play, 
but there was no cable <laughs> and there was nowhere to be found. And so, hence not plug and play. Yeah. So hence not plug and play. So that's immediately what jumped into my, my head besides yes, 20 years ago, running around as a student worker or when HDMI kind of first came out, kind of crazily, uh, trying to lock down HDMI cables, which weren't cheap back then either. That was yeah. the other issue, right? Um, so fast forwarding, that was literally a month ago. I think that just happened, that story. So fun, funny timing. And I can picture pl plopping this right on the uh, the TV in that space and uh, and solving that problem immediately. Yeah, the, the very yeah. The first thing I would say, step one is to, uh, you know, make sure the cable's there um, and there every time you need it and can't disappear. Uh, you know, the second step is it looks good. Um, is we have a place because of the oversized plate. Now you just you simply wind the, the cable up around it, and um, uh, it's 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 out of the way. It's neat and clean, and it's there every time. Um, here's here's where we uh, we'll talk about a lot more of the benefits as we go along. But one of the things um, people track with everything we say up until we say this one thing is that believe it or not, everybody when I say everybody, like 99% of the time, everybody will wrap the cable up and put it away when they're done. Um, we've got, you know, 200 of these things in, in campus and we can walk around to any one of these rooms and it, we can count on one hand the number of time we've walked into a room and the cable is laying on the floor and not been wound back up. It's, mm -hmm. we, we're actually changing human behavior with this device. Yeah, and especially if you put that wonderful logo on there, that looks fire, <laughs> as the kids would say. <laughs> I'm gonna put this logo up for everyone to see just one more time. <laughs> That's pretty dope right there. <laughs> um. Yeah, and I and I love the whole, you know, the customization of it is so simple and straightforward. I'm sure manufacturers integrators will tell you, oh, you know, you just uh, you just put in a cable retractor right in the right in that podium. Yeah, that'll cost me another five grand. Um, you know, this is simple. It's easy to use. I don't. You know, here's the funny thing about tethers. I'm gonna go off on a tangent here for a second because these retractable tethers, as as amazing as they sound, they're you know nobody ever retracts them <laughs> okay they sit on the table and they get tangled up mm -hmm. and then you know somebody walks in and it's not working or whatever it is on the cable somebody yanks on the cable because it's all tied up you understand where i'm going with this mm -hmm. tangent right so this is really just the one cable that sits behind a tv you pull it up you plug it in if you don't use it you still know where it's going so it's not getting tangled up it's not getting pulled it's not getting you know i don't know rich that's it's just really simple and straightforward like yeah Every every time I go into the rooms with the, the the kind of retractable ones, I feel like it's stuck. I'm thinking of our class last semester. We actually walked into the room. We were going to plug in a laptop, and we went to pull, and it just didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, and that was exactly the example that just came to mind when you just went off on that tangent. Yeah, I you know I I remember what Brandy told us when we first talked about uh, Brandy from uh, BAM Marketing. Uh, she said, you're going to look at this product and you're going to say, crap, how come I didn't think of this? And I, I, I kid you not, I caught myself there. <laughs> I kid you not, when I opened a box, I looked at it and I was like, why didn't I think of this? <laughs> <laughs> so brilliant. That this, this, right. is a, this is a great product, guys. You know, the latest iteration came from people saying, you know, that, hey, you know, we can't drill into walls or we have carts that are moving around regularly. I walked into my son's school this year and they, they put, you know, $5,000, you know, in um, multi-touch interactive touch screens all over the place. And they got HDMI cables dangling out the side of them. And I'm like, oh, that's, you know, 30 little kids running around a classroom with an HDMI cable hanging out the side of a $5,000 set. I'm like, that's gonna, <laughs> You know, you're gonna snap that. You're gonna break that connector on the on the board inside the television and stuff. So that kind of led to the, the product that you're holding, which is literally just our single game version mounted to a bracket that then can just stick to the back of a television. Um, that's three three M's um, DHB tape, and basically once it's been on that TV for the, their the recommendations are 30 minutes, press it onto the TV, and after 30 minutes, it's a permanent bond. And and um, and I, I can say that I, I put one on my bench at work with a 
a one inch by three inch piece of tape and it, it will take me a chisel or a putty knife to get it off. There's no, I can drag a 500 pound bench around my room with three inches of contact. And um, so, so the uh, tape uh, is, is more, can, more than going to be secure I can, enough. Um, I can confirm that so. story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just curious because, you know, we work in academia and uh, it's, uh, the kids are amazing. Uh, they're the reason we're all here. But like, what is, you know, it's a 3M um, piece of tape glue that kind of sit, sits on the back of the TV. Um, what's the kind of, like, if somebody walks and turns and their book bag hits the hits the device, does it fall off? Does it go back on right away? Have you had any experience with any of that stuff? I've not had any experience with that happening. But again, I, I can tell you, if I, if I attempt to I have one on a television, and there's no way it's it's coming off without without the putty knife. There's oh, no actually. bumping it. I mean, a stack of chairs can run into it, and it's not gonna gonna come off. Now, now if you put it on the back of a television that's been hanging on the wall for ten years and coated with dust, maybe there'll be an issue. But um, as anything, clean the surface and, and attach it. And um, I can't imagine this coming yeah, off. It, if, if you don't have a putty knife, you're going to bust things if you try to get it off of there. So, I mean, and, and bust yeah, major, yeah. Ma major things, not just, you know, it's not just going to fall off um, with that, that yeah. adhesive. It literally, we, we, we're we literally, you know, can't, uh, we, we can literally, you know, pull that 500 bench, 500 pound bench around by that three inch piece of, of, of tape. So, wow. Not necessarily here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not necessarily here to you know advertise for 3M, but uh, that stuff works. Yeah, that was actually one of the first yeah, things I, I noticed. Accidental, because, okay. Yeah, accidentally, it's not going to get bumped off there. Maliciously, you know, anybody can do anything for sure. So I'm not going to say somebody can't take it off, but um, it's you know, I've, I've got these. You know, I've got a handful of these out there. Most of my installs are in the wall, but a handful of these I've installed um, in this way and, and have had zero issues. There's no, um, in, in our hotel, our hotel uses it for some of their portable stuff. Um, likewise, you know, in the hospitality world, you know, I didn't even touch on that, but we have a 50 room hotel on campus, on our campus, um, full of meeting rooms that opened to two years ago, post COVID, post renovation that, that um, I installed the early prototype versions in. And so two years going, multiple meetings in a dozen conference rooms every day by general public. Um, I get the same report from them. They've spent zero minutes in two years in any of their rooms delivering or picking up or replacing an HDMI cable. And same report from their um, facilities person that for some reason, even general public, even their guests at the hotel are when they disconnect are wrapping the cable back up on the wall when they're done. They said it's just crazy. So not only have they not lost a cable, not had to replace a single cable in two years, but they're not even wrapping the cable back up when they're done. It's just something that's there. It works. And, and so yeah. one, one, of the, one of the first things that happens when we show this to somebody, you, you, you wrap it up and the end of the cable might hang out a little bit and show. And uh, everybody says, well, you know, you should put like a little piece of Velcro behind that or a clip behind that so that cable, you know, can be can be hidden, you know, and, and be neat and clean. That's everybody's first response to this. Um, and what we found out is the only time you want to get that cable tucked in nice and clean is when the architect and the designer come through to inspect the rooms. That's the, that's the only time that you want that cable to be hidden. Um, after that, the fact that that little cable end hangs out a little bit, people walk in the room and they go, oh, that's my cable. That's what I need. They walk over, they grab it, they unwind it, they plug it in. Things automatically work. They yep. you know hold their meeting. They wind it back up, and they don't think nobody thinks anything. You know thinks twice about it. Uh, so you know we we've eliminated 100% eliminated service calls to classrooms and, and meeting rooms that we put this thing in. We've made you know now we've made areas accessible to you know students and general public without having no passwords, no network, you know accessibility. We haven't spent 2,500 bucks a room. For a wireless access point, we haven't, you know, compromised our network in any way, shape, or form of people having to get on it. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, we have, we're not buying more cables. You know, it's cable agnostic. So if USB-C is the next thing that we all have to have, you just take the screws off, swap the cable out, and you're good to go. 
Um, so now we're, you know, securing, you know, an expensive cable. You know, HDMI obviously have come down a lot of price, but now we're taking an expensive cable and locking that in place as well. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to change. You know, if you stick it to the TV, you know, you, you might have, you might want to try to get that off again uh, if you replace the TV because you, you're going to want to hang on to your cable EZ and put it on the next TV up there. Um, if, if that's the way yeah. you install on that, but we we can also put it in in, in rooms and then you know we've got uh, the the theater department on on you know on campus is like I need a handful of these because he's putting you know DMX drops uh, around the various places um, up in the theater so he's got a DMX cable hanging there that's not going to walk away it's always going to be there um, every time they run it um, you know microphones uh, like Jeremy said we can um, you know. We've got a mic holder that we can put up, put right on the front of this thing, so you can literally, you know, put the microphone. Uh, anyway, we we don't have a way necessarily yet to um, stop them from stealing your microphone, but at least the mic cable will always be there, and you know, you can uh, hang the microphone there. Um, yeah, and uh, I mean, it's really taken off any any worry I have. You know, the other day I installed our our, our video production um, communication department wanted wanted something where they they need a needed a Thunderbolt 4 cable, and I don't know if you guys have had to purchase a, a three-meter Thunderbolt cable, but that's about a $150 cable. And, and again, with this, I had no concerns putting that cable in, in a space about it walking yeah. off. You know, it hasn't, it's not an issue. It doesn't cross my mind. It, it throws yeah, that's a great point. The, the, the USB-C and the Thunderbolt cables are probably the new HDMI cables from 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And you just gave me a great idea. I think George and I are going to put our heads together and try to figure out wow. something with mics and how the how we can keep people from walking off of them. Call it like mic mayhem or something. That'll be our million dollar <laughs> idea. I don't know. That's what I just thought off the top of my head. I don't know. <laughs> now he's thinking. Now he's now he's now he's thinking about that. Why didn't I think of it? Idea. <laughs> <laughs> try it. Yeah. yeah, and then you know we, we haven't even. We have you know, all these benefits. That, the benefits just keep adding up. That's one of the, you know, our, our struggle that, we, you know, we're, we're working with Brandy to get this word out to the marketplace because, it yeah, it's a cool idea. Everybody says, that's cool. I wish I'd have thought of it. You know, it keeps the cable there. But then down the road, you know, we, now we've got, um, you know, no more lost class, you know, teaching time. Uh, we've got, you know, if once you get into the corporate world, we're eliminating lost meeting time. Um, you know, a friend of mine was, was kind of his, when I was showing him this product, he's like, holy cow, I was just in a meeting with five engineers from the Golden Gate Bridge, and we waited 20 minutes for an HDMI cable. You know, what's the amount of money that 20 minutes of five of those guys sitting there doing nothing costs somebody? Wow. Um, so, I mean, like, the you know, the return on investment for a $7,500, you know, product is, is you know, through the roof, you know, kind of thing, once you really get into the, the nitty-gritty of, you know, this thing. <clears throat> so that, that's our that's our challenge to get into the marketplace is, is – yeah, it's a great, you know, cable, cool cable thing that, uh, you know, but, you know, even beyond that, the more longer you live with it, the more you, you have to have to have it everywhere you go <laughs> just just to make your life so much easier. Yeah. I'm, so that being said, I actually have one one tie up question. It's not silly, but um, what's the coolest color that somebody's asked for? I see black, <laughs> white, custom. I'm just I'm genuinely curious. Like, do you, have any, it in green. do you have any? Well, of course, I mean, green was my first thoughts. I am. <laughs> green fanatic but we've got, a, we've got a really cool picture we'll send you um uh, we've done we've done a wood grain version that looks phenomenal awesome. wow sweet that's but no green that's cool i'm okay with that <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute i'm gonna get the new york we jets on the line, line. Uh, <laughs> we have not done green oh interesting <laughs> working on that Nobody wants Jet Green. Yeah, it could be Celtics Green. Wow. Jets, jets and Celtics fans. We can go Jet Green or Celtic Green. Either one works. They're pretty close. Uh -huh. How about Michigan State Green? Um, oh, we could do that too. Yeah. That works. That's fair. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool with that. Any green, I'm I'm good with green across the board. <laughs> I'm good with blue. I'm a simple <laughs> man with simple colors. We like to do a couple of fun things uh, with our guests as well. So um, that was awesome. We we definitely want to um, try to help get the word out there. This I I, I know exactly where this one's going to go into to my conference room. So it's going to be front and center <laughs> for uh, for all the folks that use that room. But um, we actually try to do some fun stuff. Uh, George tries to be cool and hip. Oh, and, um, oh hold on. Oh, and we do something on, called hold on. streaming season, where it's like SCN. You know how like kids use acronyms and Every stuff. Every episode. Say things are on fleek and full disclosure. I'm going to be on the record here saying I do not know. That is a Rich Miller thing, <laughs> and he goes out on Urban Dictionary, and yes. he looks for the coolest, hippest I do. words, I do. and he comes up with them. Yeah, I do. Like Half the time, I don't even know what he's saying to me. Like, 
like I think out of pocket or something like that is like one of the new ones out there. So we always try to come up with like these cool hip words because also we both have young kids. So I feel like they're going to start using them. And then our, yeah. our buddy Jim, who's I'm not going to say how old hey, he is, hey, but hey. he uses all these cool terms too. And then he tells us that they're too, too, that they're already, their time has passed. Anyway, yeah. we do streaming season. <laughs> um, and it's really just to ask our guests, like, what are you watching? It could be the last movie you watched, the last show you binged on Netflix. Um, no wrong answers. And, you know, just have a little fun at the end of the show. So, mm. I'll put them on the spot. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys need a minute to think, if you guys need, I know what's going on in the world, but I don't necessarily involve myself in the middle of it all the time. I kind of, you know, I'm busy running a couple companies and, um, and you know, keep just, I, I keep up with it. I'm not like ignorant to anything, um, but I don't like, you know, follow. I, I'm very aware of you know, who Taylor Swift is and what's going on with that whole thing, but. Um, not that I care much about it, it's the wear of it. Taylor <laughs> Swift, that's uh, Travis Kelsey's girlfriend, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and she, she apparently sings or something too. Uh, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> well. I knew you were trouble. With, oh, no, we're not singing Taylor boy, Swift. No, Sorry, no, my no. kid. I have two girls, eight and four, and they're into this Just Dance thing right now, and Taylor Swift's on it, so I have to hear it in my car all the time. So yeah. I know a lot of Taylor yeah. Swift. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> my, my eight-year-old's a, a boy so we're not into taylor swift so much but he's into all the all the marvel all the superhero movie nice everything. awesome so, so I, my, my last movie is you know was was aquaman with him me personally mm -hmm. i don't again you sorry know, you had to sit through a, that a full -time day job at, <laughs> having a full-time day job at the college and and trying to get this going um don't have a ton of spare time but you know i i enjoy um engineering type sort of thing. So um, I've been binging like how it's made um, on the Roku channel is, is my my show. Just, you know, I, I just enjoy watching that that stuff. And then and then I just got in the last week, I've been watching um, it's retailed as a mystery zip museum show has been they find obscure things at different museums and kind of go in, hmm. in the back. So I guess I guess I enjoy history stuff as well so, so nice very cool nice i've been doing an old old show and a new show uh i've been watching homeland over again so again. i'm actually up to ep season seven out of eight i've already That's watched it once show. before i watched it like live back what was it 2011 to like homeland 2017 had seven seasons had eight seasons actually really? i'm about to finish the seventh and go on to these again i've seen it once before but I, I haven't watched it in a while and it's like really like almost like i'm watching it over again which is really cool also highly recommend bosch on uh, amazon prime it's kind of like a old school cop LA show, but with like a new school mentality. Um, and I don't know, I kind of enjoy it. It's kind yeah. of a, kind of a fun one to keeps, keeps moving on and keeps, keeps me interested. So, yeah, I'm, um, I've been binging on Netflix. Um, I can't remember the author's name now. This is horrible, but, uh, he has a bunch of series on Netflix. These are all based off of his books. Uh, but I just saw fool me once. Ah, I heard somebody recommended that to me and wow. Yeah. Oh my God. Binge worthy show. Like you, you're going to watch all episodes right through. Um, oh, Brandy, I just realized she wrote Riz in there and she, oh, from Riz, off stage. That. Riz, that was one. Yeah. That was the number one hit, uh, hit like fleek word of the year I say, yeah. I just use her. and yeah. camping i don't Camp. know what that means camping. i'm gonna have to look that one up yeah oh my goodness maybe you need to hit brandy up for, yeah. uh, for the hit yeah words. i guess brandy has all the hit words uh, <laughs> on, on oh no she's saying jeremy, oh, likes jeremy to camp. Likes to camp. <laughs> i was gonna say i'm gonna gotta go to urban dictionary and look up camping i don't know what i'm yeah. gonna get so in, in my in my extra free time yeah I'm, I'm nice restoring, uh, i enjoy camping but i'm in the process of restoring mm. a uh, vintage camper as well so oh cool yeah i nice. just i just Brand, picture, i can picture brandy I, cracking up right now she's loling i just pictured rich going down a rabbit hole <laughs> on urban dictionary looking up camping and <laughs> you know i'm gonna do it anyway right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i will report back and gopesh will add it post edit <laughs> as long as it's appropriate for our viewing audience <laughs> that was great that was great uh, nice um nice. but you know uh you know uh, I did look up a quick dad joke. Oh, I we got were... one. In my, I got one in my brain. But oh, go, go, well, you got one. Let's well, let's, let's tell them what we do first. See if oh, they. Yeah, we, we'll, let's prep. So normally we don't prep you for this because we want to see if you have one on the fly. So we like to tell dad or ball and or ball jokes at the end of our each of our shows. 
If either of you have one or want to quickly look one up on Google while we tell ours, go for it. If not, no pressure, no big deal. But um, it sounds like George has one. So we're yeah, going to let him yeah. go first today. Yeah, I know. I know this audience is big on reading books. Uh, a lot of folks, you know, okay. I just want to say I've been uh, reading a book about anti-gravity. Okay. And uh, it's impossible to put down. <laughs> <laughs> I, nice. crack, I cracked myself up nice. on that one. I'm that was sorry. a good one. I'm sorry. So I memorized one, actually. I don't have to look it up. Oh, look at you. I have a, I have a folder on my phone, which this shouldn't surprise you, yeah, no, uh, it doesn't. of screenshotted dad jokes. Someday we will take a uh, uh, videos or screenshots <laughs> of your search history and put it for our listeners. To... Yeah, it's not even inappropriate. It's just it's just weird stuff. Yeah. That, you know, but um, I, I have a good one. So two pieces of bread. We're going to get married. Two pieces of bread, we're going to get married. Two pieces of bread, we're going to get married. Everything was going great until somebody toasted the bride and the groom. (laughs) (laughs) I think think we nailed the dad jokes today. Well, we, Brandy says we need a video montage for dad jokes released on Father's Day. Wow, what an idea. That could be the whole episode. Yeah. Our June episode. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well done. Brandy's just behind the scenes, yeah. just killing it right now with these ideas. Yeah, Bam Marketing 101. Bam. That's well fair. Done. That's fair. Well done. Yeah. Um, watch out for that episode. Right. right. I was talking to my neighbor. Yeah, I was talking to my neighbor the other day. He's a police officer, and he caught a couple of kids outside playing the other day. With a, one had a battery, and the other one had a firework. So he, he charged the one and let the other one off. I just got that. <laughs> 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 well done Thank well God. done yeah. initially i was like that's a little sus but uh yeah oh uh, my god trying to work go. some of those words in there you here know? we go oh uh, do, do people do people with electric cars do they listen to acdc or something more current <laughs> ah, well, <laughs> i like that one actually nice. well done because that's also a little tech a little av in there yeah. well done well done yeah. well done uh, bet yeah uh, um, we got an ACDC stand here, huh? Yeah. Stands on there, stands. too. Just oh. trying to hit as many words as I can here from, yeah. my, from the list. I found my list of uh, top 20 words of uh, fleek words fleek of 2023. Words of 2023. <laughs> I think I just made that up. Why don't you up. put the list out there and maybe our listeners can yeah, comment on that. I think we that. should. I think GoPest should put the list out there. It's ironic that Riz is not on here because I mm. believe that, as Brandy said, that was ranked number one for yeah. 2023. But um, Sus was number one on the, the list that I found. Yeah. Riz was like the only one I knew from that yeah, list. Yeah. Which is... Well, you're pretty mid, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that means, too. <laughs> Uh, I think we need a vibe check for George. Yeah. Oh, he's going at it. He's, yeah. he's going to make them all happen. Well, yeah. folks, um, this is a wonderful kickoff to the first episode of, of the year. Uh, Jeff, Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you know, and sticking through all the technical issues. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, that came with today. So really, really appreciate that. Brandy, wonderful behind the screens, uh, you know. Where can uh, people get a hold of you guys? Uh, do you want to? Is there any contact information, socials that you guys want to throw out there that we can uh, give to our listeners? Yeah, where can they contact you to buy uh, boxes of these <laughs> of these uh, amazing boxes? CableEasy yes. dot com. So it's just nice. Easy, so. so cool. Yeah, cool. yeah you, can, you can contact us there. You can uh, you know get a contact email. Uh, you know you can see all the product. Uh, the new, you know, hanging off the back of the TV mount, um, we're working on getting that up, uh, out the, you know, be available to the general public. Uh, you know, we, we can take orders for it now. We don't have the, it set up quite yet. It will be set up shortly. Um, launching real, real quickly here. Uh, we're in full production mode. We, we, you know, if you need a thousand of them or, you know, want to do your entire campus, we can, we can do that for you. You want your logo on them all. We can do that for you. Um, you know, we, well, they're they're made in black and white. Um, if you you know, need them a custom color, we can accommodate that for, for with proper quantity probably. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're 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 hitting it off there. So 
Awesome. I also, just because I just saw myself on the screen, I don't know if GoFresh can get this, but uh, I just wanted to point out my Atlas uh, IED, my new dri- oh. my new drip, <laughs> as the kids say, the, from our friend Gina Santavero at uh, Atlas IED. He's trying to figure out different ways he could use all Sorry, 10 of those I'm trying to use words. all the words as, as quickly as possible, because I kind of <laughs> forgot with all the technical difficulties at the beginning. So. <laughs> I think I got like at least six or seven in, so I think it's a pretty good start. Um, you could find us at Bald AV Guys on the socials, George Chaco on LinkedIn, Rich Miller on LinkedIn. Actually, George Chaco CTS. Apparently, there's a whole bunch of George Chacos on LinkedIn. Yeah, fair. There's not a lot of Rich Miller the third, so I think you should be able to find me pretty quickly. All right. So, folks, thanks for listening today. Um, that's all we have for today. You know, keep a, keep an eye out for the um, for the AV show, AV game show releasing next week and as well as uh, future episodes. So until then, stay steady, help someone, and check in on an old friend. And obviously, have a cup of joe for us. Until next time, take care. Thanks for watching, everyone. And until next time, this has been a Bald AV Guys production. Take care.